Hello everyone, this is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to class number eight. Uh, tonight we're gonna to be talking about chapter number eight in my book, Swift for Absolute Beginners, and we're gonna be discussing arrays and dictionaries. For those of you that are attending live, um, I will pause the video or I'll stop the recording at the end to allow you to ask questions about this chapter or anything else in the book or about Swift development. For those of you that are listening to the recordings, if you go to my uh, website at excelme.com, let me get there real quick, um, you can see the uh, classes that are, are classes, you can see the sessions that are coming up right here under free videos, the free sessions that are coming up, as well as uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get alerts every time I upload the videos and you can attend the live sessions here by clicking on that. So let's go ahead and get started um, about talking about arrays and dictionaries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead, I have a playground application that I'm gonna talk through as I get, uh, get going here so you don't have to watch me type and we can be as efficient as possible. So here is an array. I have an array of strings and I have six of them here. Now the arrays are zero index, meaning the first item in the array starts at zero and goes to five. You need to be real careful as you specify your, um, your index, what array item you want, that you don't go past the end of it. If you go past the end of it, bad things happen inside your application and it will crash. So just, oops, sorry here. Here in Playground, it's a little bit more forgiving, um, but in your iOS application, it will cause it to crash. So you don't want to go past the end. You'll see an out-of-bounds error uh, with your array that um, will indicate the reason why it crashed down in your console. Okay, so here I've populated the array. It's a var, so I can change it. And this is where I'm gathering or printing out the items that I want to see in the array. Um, you can also do what's called fast enumeration here by declaring a variable here. This would be the equivalent of declaring a new variable. And what I'm going to, what happens in a for in loop is that each item in the array, starting at index zero, will be put in my string, and it will be in this case printed out. You can see the printout of what it looks like here by clicking on that guy right there. There they are. I close it. So that's printing out the array. Um, and it will go through one time it will print out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So that will print out all the items in the array. Now if you there's a bunch of array operations, again these are called containers. An array is a type of container object because um, they contain objects. And they could contain strings or whatever you want, your own objects if you'd like. Um, and one of the met or functions is called append. So this will add an item to the array at the last item. So item number uh, six or item number five, or zero indexed. So this will now make a sixth um, indexed item or seventh item in the array Sunday. Now, if I print it out, so print it out, it says six times, it is seven times. Prints it out, and of course you can see it right here if you click on it. So array is very handy. Uh, the nice thing about them is that they are the order that you put them in is the order that they're stored. And that's the order that you access them. Okay. All right. So another type of container is a dictionary. A dictionary is like a dictionary in your, um, you know, on your bookshelf back when we had dictionaries on our bookshelf. Um, to look up a word in the dictionary, you look up the word in programming here that would be called the key and in the dictionary it would have a definition in programming it's called the value so a dictionary here I'm storing two strings in my dictionary okay so um, and I can have as many um, as many key value pairs so this is the key this is how I look it up this is the value separated by a colon next key value, key value. So I have three key values in this um, dictionary. So 
if I want to access a, um, here, this is called person. If I want to access the key favorite language, favorite language is going to return the value, just like looking it up in the dictionary um, definition of a word. Um, the key, the value is Swift. And sure enough, I print out Swift. And it's an optional because it doesn't necessarily need to contain or contain a value. So if I misspell it, I can see here it's nil, right? Because dictionaries, on the when you are looking them up, could return nil in the value. Likewise, if I want to print out the last name, um, I could do person uh, brackets double quote, and I'll do last name enter. And there is Bennett. Last name, key, value. And if I wanted to do first name, again, I'll save you having me watch me type. There we go. And there's Gary. Last name, key, value. Dictionaries and arrays are very common very popular, very powerful. You'll use them, one or both of them, multiple times in any normal iOS application. So um, take a look at chapter eight. I cover a lot more about containers sample, and, and do a sample app in chapter eight in the book. And um, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to post it on the forum or um, send me an email, I'll be happy to answer them. For those of you that are attending live, I'm going to stop the YouTube recording and allow you to ask questions. Just type it in the question panel to go to webinar control panel. Those of you that are listening to the recording, I will have another one posted in a week on chapter nine. All right. Thanks for attending. Those of you that are listening through YouTube.